What's up everybody? I'm Dr. Garrett Rossi, a board certified psychiatrist making mental health content here on YouTube. And if you're new to the community, please consider subscribing as we update our material regularly. If you are a returning viewer, please continue to spread the word, continue to tell your friends and family about the content we're making here as I believe this community is a really valuable resource for anybody either going through psychiatric tra training in psychiatric treatment or who just wants to know more about what we do as a field. So today's video is going to focus on the concept of microdosing. And you've probably heard this everywhere. I mean, people have made a thousand YouTube videos about microdosing psilocybin and other psychedelics, but I'm going to give you what is the latest research and what the latest research tells us about microdosing psychedelics. Does it really work? So let's answer that question in this video right now. So microdosing has gained significant popularity over the recent years as a method to gain all of the benefits of taking a psychedelic medication such as psilocybin, mescaline, or LSD without necessarily having the negative, potentially negative side effects associated with these psychedelic medications. So you take a much smaller dose than you otherwise would if you were taking the medication in its therapeutic range, which like I said, for things like psilocybin is usually 25 to 30 milligrams um, in a single dose, you might be taking 5 to 10% of the standard dose. So we're going to define microdosing here in scientific way, and we're going to call microdosing taking approximately 5 to 10% of the standard dose. So you can multiply that out, figure out what 5 to 10% of the standard dose of say 30 milligrams of psilocybin would be, and that would be how much you would take if you are trying to microdose. Most standard doses, like I said, are 30, 20 to 30 milligrams per 70 kilograms, at least for people who are taking psilocybin. So even with only a small amount of drug being taken, there is still evidence that suggests that microdosing can bring about some of the benefits associated with the full dose treatment without all the negative side effects like hallucinations, for example, because who wants to hallucinate if you don't have to, and you can get all of the benefits or the mental health benefits here, that's what we're specifically talking about, of taking psychedelic medication. The problem is, because there's always a problem, right? It's not that simple. It would be great if it was, but it's not. And most of this evidence is subjective, right? It's subjective evidence, meaning it's me taking a microdose of psychedelics and then telling people, wow, I've had this profound experience. I'm such a different person. I'm such a better psychiatrist on psychedelics. I just don't understand why, but hey, uh, it's really working for me and you should listen to me because I know what I'm talking about, right? That's, that's kind of what people are doing. And believe it or not, a lot of this information was, um, at least in the studies that I've reviewed, came from Reddit forums, right? And subreddits. So people's Reddit forums and subreddits were kind of combed and they wanted to see users' experiences with microdosing. They wanted to kind of get a picture of what those experiences look like. Now, people experimenting with this dosing have reported tons of benefits, right? There have been all kinds of benefits reported. Some of them are enhanced feelings of overall well-being. I just feel better about myself in the world. I see the world as a more welcoming and enjoyable place to be. Improvements in depressive symptoms, right? So one of the big things psychiatry wants to start exploring is how can it treat patients with depression? Another one is improved anxiety, a huge problem in psychiatry as well. How do we treat anxiety disorders without giving people benzodiazepines or without using serotonin or norepinephrine or dopamine-based drugs, right? Other options to treat anxiety. And another one that was reported was emotional stability. I just for, feel more even keeled. Maybe this is what you're going for with borderline personality disorder where you know people notoriously have ups and downs throughout the day that are very difficult to regulate and regulating those emotions can be quite challenging. So in the next section, I'm going to talk about the subjective experiences of users and what these users have claimed uh, has been improved by using or microdosing psychedelics. And then I'm going to talk a little bit about the pitfalls of microdosing. What are some of the downsides to microdosing these drugs? Okay, guys, so microdosing subjective benefits according to users. And like I said, there's just not enough data from randomized controlled trials and such to be able to tell us definitively about this stuff. So a lot of this is, is gathered from people's personal accounts. So I ordered this in order from largest subjective benefit to the lowest or least subjective benefit. So the things that I list first 
are going to be items that people say were improved the most by microdosing, and I'm going to list the ones at the end that were least improved according to the user's experience. So number one, like I've already alluded to, improved mood. People just feel better microdosing psychedelics. Number two, improved focus. So it enhances the person's ability to focus on their tasks at hand and to work on the material that they're working on or projects they're working on. Number three, creativity. This is probably one that I hear a lot about subjectively from patients of mine that are users is that they feel like this really helps their creativity and that they are able to come up with concepts and ideas that they otherwise wouldn't have been able to come up with without the drug. Number four, self-efficacy. So feelings like I can handle my own stuff, I'm, I'm, so, I'm effective, I'm good, I can make things happen. Uh, the next one is improved energy. So people have reported improved energy. Another one that comes up quite often is social benefits. So there, I'm more social, I'm engaged in more pro-social behaviors, and it's easier for me to engage in those pro-social behaviors, right? If I'm usually a pretty neurotic person, a pretty anxious person, socialization can be a scary thing and it can be difficult for me to engage in. This helps a person socialize. Cognitive benefits, right? Just general cognition, processing speed, uh, memory, etc. right, is enhanced according to some of these users' experiences. Reduced anxiety, I feel less anxious, and, uh, and therefore I'm able to work more effectively, I'm able to socialize more effectively, etc. And the final one being physiological enhancement, so I'm assuming they're talking about physical benefits like ability to work out, feeling like you have more endurance, feeling like you can, you know, you have more energy, etc. So I'm not really sure about that one, but, at le but that was, like I said, the least benefit according to subjective users' experiences. Like all good things, there's pitfalls to microdosing, right? There's potential side effects, there's potential downsides. And I want to bring to your attention that many of the subjective experiences that people have had using these substances are the exact opposite of what the other users have said have been beneficial. So the people that have had negative experiences with microdosing it's almost like they're polar opposite experiences, but in the same domains. And you'll see what I'm talking about in a second. So the pitfalls, number one, of course, are legal issues. There's a legal risk to taking psilocybin. Even if you're microdosing psilocybin, you're still at legal risk. You're purchasing it most of the time illegally from individuals in shady circumstances. And if you are caught with it by the police, you could be in trouble and you could be you could face many, many charges, right, for this. So there's legal risk to taking these drugs. Another one at the top of the list was physiological discomfort. And this would be common, right? If you're tripping on a psychedelic medication, then you could feel discomfort. They could be the quote unquote bad trip, right? Where you where you're not doing well. You're not feeling an increased sense of well-being and you're not feeling a relief, a relief of your depression, you're actually experiencing the exact, the exact opposite. And that's what I'm talking about here. So other individuals reported impaired focus, right? So at the beginning, I was saying that people said, subjective users said that improved focus was one of their top things that, that you know, helped with microdosing. Here, these individuals are saying, no, it impaired my ability to focus. Impaired energy, so people felt more tired on this. They weren't feeling as good. Impaired mood, so the exact opposite of what we're going for, right? Impaired mood. Increased anxiety, not decreased anxiety. Social interference, inability to socialize. So the, again, the opposite. People were saying that these uh, some microdosing, these psychedelics were helpful in terms of pro-social behaviors, but here's examples of individuals saying the exact opposite. So it's hard to really say. And then finally, cognitive problems. So difficulty processing information, difficulty remembering things, right? difficulty with cognitive processes. So currently, all we have at this point is really subjective user experience. We don't have a whole bunch of randomized controlled trials to prove one way or the other that microdosing psychedelics is beneficial for mood, anxiety, cognition, focus, etc. What I can say about my what I can say about microdosing based on what I've read on it, based on the experiences and, and the subjective experiences of some of my patients is that microdosing is not for everyone, right? This is not a this is not a cure all for your mood and anxiety and depression symptoms. And 
some people can have adverse reactions to it. So it's not a completely benign experience either. So it's not like you can take this medication and have a completely good experience, relieve all of your depression, anxiety. It's not going to work that way for everyone. So the domains, like I said, that people subjectively were saying were enhanced by microdosing psychedelics were actually found in other people's cases to be impaired. So you have opposing sides of the story. And again, we don't have the data to really say how we could apply this generally to our patient's treatment. We don't have any rigorous scientific evidence that microdosing can treat well-established mental illness such as depression. We, there's no, again, no data that says that this actually works for depression. And if you were to do so, you would be doing so basically just on people's self-reported accounts of how they feel taking microdoses of psychedelics. People who take these medications report subjective changes in mood and performance. That's correct. That's what we have based on the evidence that we have thus far. So the unsatisfying answer again here, right? I, this seems to be a theme in all of my psychedelic videos is that the unsatisfying answer is that we don't know enough about this at this point to say whether or not it's helpful or harmful or both, right? What we can say at this point is that we need large scale randomized controlled trials and they need to be completed before we can make any judgment or give any advice. I would place this in the category of under investigation with promising early signs. So that's my take on it. The, this is an interesting concept that's under investigation and there are some promising early signs that microdosing of psychedelics could be effective. I'm going to hold the video there guys. Thank you so much for watching and if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please consider joining the community and come back soon. We'll have more information about psychedelics.